Welcome to Good Morning Anambra Show. Today, Friday's episode. Uh, now, we have come again with a very pressing issue uh, bordering on our communities. And uh, this morning, we are looking at Anambra land and property laws curbing land grabbing disputes in Anambra uh, communities. We, uh, before now, we know that. Uh, we don't have much issue concerning land because a man will grow and want to build a land, you go and meet your kinsmen and they would go and show you, give you a land where you will build. But today, what we are seeing is that we, we sell lands now, we buy lands and let, a lot of issues are cropping up from that. So we have uh, a specialist in the studio this morning uh, for, so that we look at these laws and see what they are and how applicable they are in our communities. We have Prince Ikechuku Ndigwe. Prince Ikechuku Ndigwe is a, a law, a land law expert. He is the chairman, Enforcement Committee on Law and Prohibition of Fraudulent Practice and Other Related Matters, Oka South. Welcome to the studio, Prince. Thank you for having me here. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Now, we, we, uh, I think these laws, there, there were reasons they were made. Yeah. We have reasons they were made. So let us have some of these laws concerning mm. the, the way you, you can go and buy land or what you, can, you don't have to do so that you don't put yourself into trouble. Thank you very much. Yes, um, you see, the Anambra State in 2012 dumped its feet to enact a law because of the fraudulent activities on land and property in the state. You see, um, before now, just as you said, when we grow up, the parents will go and give you an allocation yourself without even a survey plan, the land still belongs to you because it is given to you by inheritance. But this time around, people go into the, into the village, buy land, but inherit by purchase. And there is difference between one having this land, this is dedicated to me by my grandfather or my father, and that I bought this and there is a deed either deed of assignment, irrevocable power of attorney, or deed of convenience given to you. They are all different things. So the Anambra State, because of the character and what land grabbers, swindlers, and all those people walking around, seeing people, looking for people to defraud, the Anambra State now enact, enacted this law in 2012, which is signed by His Excellency Governor Peter Obi. So, these laws are, it's just like in section 3 of this law. He said, anybody who sells or attempt to sell or otherwise transfer or attempt to transfer any land not belonging to him to any person shall be guilty of an offense and liable to, there is a clause there, if state land you have your terms of prison or fine, mm -hmm. if it is an individual land. Mm -hmm. So the, the government knew why they did it in that form, stipulating, telling you if state land. Because state, before state, sh before state will go into anybody's land, they will make, they will acquire land genuinely in line with the Land Use Act, 1978 Land Use Act, that said the, 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 the state have the right to acquire for overriding public interest, such as schools, hospitals, recreational centers, what have you, etc. there. So, and if they do that, there is compensation that will be given to that people. They will give you 20% of the land acquired by the government and give either cash, they will still give you cash and give you 20% land elsewhere in a choice place, not really from that particular place they acquired. So people now started going into government land 
they will go in your parents, your king grade, your community have given this land to government for something. And your, when people grow up, they will go into the land because they find the land still virgin. Nothing has been done on it. They will jump into the land, start parcelating the land to sell. And the moment anybody that buys the land, if it is government land, mind you, you have no land. You have no land because the land has been acquired by the government. That is one. And in line with this, just as I not just address what I'm saying, section, section unauthorized survey of government land. You don't have any right if you are not from the survey department to go into government land and make survey. Mm. But you see some stubborn surveyors. They know that this land belongs to government. But because of their tummy, they will go into government land and survey and survey the land. Still take such same to survey department to deposit. And when they do that, if somebody wants now to go and buy land, the person will, they will say go to government. Go to Ministry of Survey. Go and ask. The person will go to Ministry of Survey and find out that the survey plan of that same land is there. He will, he will assume that the land is genuine. The next thing he will pay. Maybe on the process of developing, government will come. Okay. And if the government comes, definitely you have no land. Because the land belong, not, does not belong to you. The community has been taken care of. And your money can go like that? Your money can go. How, why your money will not go is that you know the person that sold the land to you. To you. you go back to recover your money from the person. So again, it's, if it is individual land, you see, some people will come up, wake up in the morning, just go down into, you go into the, the village now, you will see a lot of people have built little batches in the, in the bush there, becoming Nebuchadnezzar's in the bush. People will come in, they will say, okay, they join, go and ask this person that they know about the genuity of this, of this land, that they know about the genuity. And you will go and ask those people, they will say, this land is genuine, we will take you to the owner. And you don't know that they have conspired. All right. Now, if, for instance, mm. I want to buy a land mm. today, yeah. what's the best way to go about it? Because there are so many people in our society that want to do things the right way. Yeah. There are so many that wouldn't want to go into one form of trouble mm. or the other. Yeah. So if I have made my money and I'm willing and ready to buy a land, mm. how do I go about it to ensure that I'm in safe hands and I don't run into any trouble? Okay. I will still start with government land. Okay. If you want to buy and you find out that that place is good for you to buy and you, you notice that the land belongs to government, Go to the land, Ministry of Land. Ministry of Make, you pay for such. Make inquiries. It does, if the land is still empty for you to, to be accommodated, they will do. They will ask you. That is why you see uh, there is an advert going on. And the, the Commissioner for Lands, the, the, they, are, they are making advert on layouts that have not been revalidated now. They are layouts that have been taken care of. You know, there were, there was, there were re, um, revocations passed, even in times of P2B, mm. like um, industrial layout, Agwoka, which later become, became Greenwood Estate, now partly Millennium. Mm. All right. You see, some people that have C of O there, they are still having the C of O of industrial layout, and they still assume that the land belongs to them. When there have been revocation, you did not go for annulment. If there is a revocation, you go for annulment. Certain fees and everything will be paid. The land still belongs to you. So if you, are, if you are selling, you are not even given the right to sell. You are given that land as an allocation to accommodate people so that people will have something doing. For you to build something that will accommodate our youth, just to eradicate poverty. But you people will go in, go to Agua Canal, you see somebody, because those plots there, a plot is up to 20, a, 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 an allocation, a number given to you, that's an allocation, is up to 20 plots, some 15. So some people will come, they will go in there, do mini estates, start parcelating it when the government have not given you the authority to, do that. to subdivide. The Ministry of Lands have the right, they will tell you, do, this is subdividing. 
If you divide it with another survey, you have gone wrong. You have what's deviated. What's the implication? The implication is jail term. It is here. It said, any person who enters state land to carry out any survey without the approval of the surveyor general of the state commits an offense and shall be liable to imprisonment for five years or a fine of 500,000 naira or both. That is within the discretion of the person sitting, either the magistrate mm -hmm. or the, the judge. judge. You understand? So now, if you want to buy a land, if it is government land, go to Ministry of Lands to confirm. They will tell you, this land is in Kumbad. Don't go there. This land is, 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 is being kept for some. Don't go there. If it is individual, ask for the right family that will put their signature in the deed you are buying. Because here we have liability of an agent. Liability of an agent. Any agent that any agent who let me call, who facilitate, whether as an agent, the commission of any land in sec uh, section 3 and 4 above and we found out that it's, the land was sold fraudulently. The agent served the same jail term in accordance to section 3 and 4. So any agent that is supposed to lead you to buy a land is supposed to make a very, very, very good inquiry and verification. Because if you have any problem, he is the key suspect. Because he took you to there. He, mm -hmm. he, he facilitated the commission for his stormy sake. So if there is a problem there, he definitely have to follow up. So when you go to the villagers, you want to buy a land, if there are documents that are given to you, go for verification. How did you get this land? Did you buy it? Or was it given to you by inheritance? Or is it, if it is a community land? Tell me, I will go further. When you go further, you will have your answers so that you will not be apprehended by the law enforcement agencies. All right, it's good morning, Anambra. Anambra land and property laws curbing land grabbing disputes in Anambra communities. That's what we are looking at. And in case you're watching the program, there is an opportunity for you to call or go to our Facebook page to drop your comment or ask any question because the person in the studio is more than able and capable to give answers to your question this morning. So use the phone lines on your screen to ask any question or make your own contribution on the issue at hand. All right, now there is another issue when it comes to land, uh, carbon land grabbing. Uh, we've had some stories where a land is sold to Mr. A, at the same time the land is sold to Mr. B and Mr. C, so you find one person selling one land to more than. more than one person. So in that situation, what happens? Thank you very much. You see all these things, this law took care of them. In section 4 of this law, that is sales of land to more than one person. It said any person who sell or purport to sell a parcel of land to more than one person with intention to defraud shall be guilty of an offense and liable to imprisonment for five years or to a fine of 500,000 or both. You have no right. This thing in my office now, three, three days, three, four days ago, sorry, on Friday last week, a week today, somebody wrote a petition to the chairman of Okasau local government requesting him to detail the enforcement committee for a grassroots investigation that he bought this land in the year 1991 you know those days in 1991 um, all these did irrevocable power of attorney were faint they, 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 they were not even coming up much by then they do their own written document in an agreement and it stands anybody that writes an agreement with you ordinarily with a stamp by then it stands. It's a legal document. Mm. So some people will come. Some persons will come. Your father sold land to Mr. A in 1985, 91. And you now grew up. You said, you asked, they said, this land belongs to your father. You have no other option because of poverty's sake. 
or because you want to join the moving train. You go into that land that you knew, that you've been told that your dad sold, you go back and resell, not knowing that the law is watching you till you'll be apprehended. And when you are apprehended, you face it because it is pure fraudulent. You have no right to sell to more than one person. And some of, some of the time, buyers are always behaving as if they, they, are, they, they, they cover their eyes with either charm. Somebody will come. And you see there, there is beacon in this land, on this land. There are L forms or there are mini fence in this land. You will know that there is present of somebody there. But because either the person maybe feels he can do the trouble or that the site is good for him, he will go and put his money and buy. The next thing, you do, the next thing they do, because maybe if they find out that the other person has no money to follow up the matter, they will go to police. Take the case to police for malicious damage. Because you know, if you are building something on my land, if you are building on my land and I have no powers, for example, to fight you, the only option I will get, I will have, is to go down there and bring them down, which in the eyes of the law, it's an offense, it's malicious okay. damage. So some, when this thing happens, the, the other person that bought it fraudulently, we have no option than to run to the police, because police doesn't treat issue of land matters, anything tied to. They deal on the criminal aspect of it, like forcible entry, malicious damage, tra um, threat to life on that co conduct, which is unlikely to breach the peace mm -hmm. of the community so when you you have such you are not supposed to anybody that says look at his jail term it is stipulated here already but the other person that buys they will go in the next thing they will take the case to magistrate court and when the case is in magistrate the police are not talking of the land matters what they are talking of the offense committed mm -hmm. so the other person will feel that i mean I'm, I'm i'm on i'm on top because i am the person that took this person to the police mm. why the other person that have no money and is the rightful owner will be there which is so bad that is the reason why if they report this kind of a matter to my office we go in depth investigation we will look at the owners of the land how did the, the land emanated to come to you how did the digital document emanated to come to you from where did you have it who are the signatories who who are those that signed the document who will go for inquiry so you handle such matters yes in my okay. office there in Okasa local government okay you understand so we'll go in there make sure we'll do in-depth investigation call mr a and mr b give me your documents if you bring your you tender your doc document our own is to give the field officers and whosoever involved to go to those places and the people mentioned to get their obtain their statement and on the process of obtaining of their statement, we will cross-examine them. You will get the fact. Truth is like pregnancy. Mm. You don't cover it. You can only cover it when it is two, two for months a for a while. But it will, it will be out when it is due. Okay. Uh, uh, have you ever done this, uh, handled this kind of a matter in any community in Anambra State and uh, it has seen the light of the day? Isiago. Mm. Amorobia. Or come my own place here. I have done that, both for communities and individuals. individuals. And they saw the light because the truth is there. If I come out, the, 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 the law said in section 9.3 that the, the, the committee have the right to arrest anybody violating the provision of this law and take to the police for possible, for possible prosecution in a court of competent jurisdiction. So when you bring out your report, Whoever is indicted is indicted. My own is if I write the report and give to you, you have the right to take it to the police for further prosecution or you go to court direct, high court, civilly. And when I'm free to come and give evidence, I did the investigation or whoever did the investigation will come, bring out the files and tell you this are according to this because you must have your observation and you will see your findings. Okay, now let's look at this issue of... Um C of O. Yes. You know, when is it necessary for someone to have C of O? And uh, what are the consequences of not having C of O when you buy a land? Okay. One is that um, C of O is normally, you normally have C of O in government lands. Why? Because it is, you know, when government, government have lands everywhere. 
they are the owners, they are the government of the day. The land belongs to the government. It is where they want to take. They will take just for the purpose of overriding public interest. Mm. The government will, if, the, if you buy a land from government, the governor signs the CFO. Any government land is being signed by the CFO. Then individual land is being signed by the Attorney General. Thank God that the now Commissioner for Land is a, is a minister in the Temple of Justice, is a lawyer, he has the qual qualification to sign document in line with the Attorney General's office because he is a lawyer. Because before Attorney General signs, because the person involved or in charge in the Ministry of Land is not a lawyer. So individual lands, you can have your CFO within a month or two months, if really the land is genuine. And mind you, the reason of you having CFO is for security's sake. The CFO can serve as a collateral okay. anywhere. You want to take money from bank, you want to do money, you want to do business to deposit something, and you have your CFO. You, you are there. But if it is only deed, it can be forged. CFO is from the government, subject to verification. Okay. When you go to Ministry of Land, you verify the CFO, you, they will bring out the file of that person. You will see the original document in which the person bought the land with. That's the deed of convenience or deed of assignment. It will be in the file of the Ministry of Land. They will, they will retrieve that one from you and give you the certificate of occupancy. That certificate of occupancy have overtaken that. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the, it is always um, good for one to have CFO if it is ordinary. And in the other side, fraudulently, why this law is being made, I am together with you. Maybe I have a land. You bought the same land I have. And I'm the rightful owner. But because I'm handicapped, no money, nothing. You now felt you have the money. You will go and do survey, take to Ministry of Land. Before you know what is happening, they have applied for CFO. The, 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 the ministry have no option because they, they didn't do any investigation on it. I, I would have even liked, I, I even wanted to put it in a pro pro proposal to the ministry. Please, anybody that is coming for CFO, send their document for scrutiny. So that you will scrutiny, you will verify. When you verify and find out here yes, there is no dispute on the land, you can issue. But some lands have been given CFO while there are disputes. All right, you hold it. We'll get back and uh, look at what will happen when we don't have CFO at this point. The program is still good morning, Anambra. Anambra land and property laws covering land grabbing disputes in Anambra communities with uh, uh, Prince Ndigwe in the studio. We take a short break here. The program returns after now. Do join us again. Actually, there are some identical or some identified issues of land uh, grabbers, especially in rural areas. Here you can see some of a group of people. Majority, majority of them are those who just uh, deported from a western world because of their they are not industrious and they now think that they can feed on people's uh, property thereby going by the way of intimidating them in getting their belongings so government on their own have a lot of power a lot of rules to play thereby you know sensitizing all these community people that's what we call selective dissemination of information a lot of people in the rural area doesn't know that there are some laws that safeguard them from all these land grabbers. But government on their own cannot even extend this information, thereby disseminate it to them or sensitize them. Because majority of them, once they know that they don't have money to go and uh, buy for the case, they will lose confidence and they will lose hope. <laughs> Government 
Onuro kuni bata na ndolo ndolo amande nata ni hina emwe ya na po customary laws na basapalo ana. Onwe kije na yede ka land design. Onwe kima yede ka ibu wa no ino. Onwe choko di ye ma mfeba. Mani ibe na customary laws. Iya fuchi yendi ni ni. So, kwa oburo nki di zinaka government iche. Kwa yaba kwa yabibe zifu yede ka ibu ndi ibu obodo. I cannot have a bundle of ball of a in charge of customs in the debut of Obudobuna and Obudobuni who had it from Obudobuni in Kosa. So, when you saw that Niji and you found out only in Ghana called the Obianis, Ozute in the lawyers, Kahanelia and Basalia Bupan, or Yenaki and in a belata because of the Pakibia Buna only Matana. Iyo pasi meye dena, maba na kuna, uno choli nyenye, maba na umwanne kutoa nanda yela na maunda yela na eweje na zuele, iye dipa lo kabu na unya hune gogo, kwa dipa lo, kabu na 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 nuko, kambi na nuko, me kalo ya mata, kamal kai siwe me, ma kabu na familia hiyo kutoa, nuto, wela na, e ba vuko yazo, upuni siapa, so sensitization unke dina. I I I O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O Half was falling in Yalaka, and then the government Diaka. I make a shot in Ham, no Zan or Lundi Hamat, because even I have been a general with you, and we're kingsmen. Then they go to Diana, who he had that. I think I got my dear guy, they say, they should be telling them that now he had no one. A government squalor, no yellow, and the Sinana, or Yatian Skuna Kanama, the government. Corruption has affected many things. And he has gone, gotten to a point that uh, things that are personal and things that will encourage our life is not uh, being uh, uh, considered. Considering the uh, fact about uh, the land dispute, it's one of the things that government should come into and uh, do something about it. Because if I found out that if I, I can do anything and go stop free, I will do anything. But if I know that government will come into what I'm doing, it will uh, build a, a level of caution uh, on what I will do. So, I'm advising that the government should come into land disputes. All this, uh, if somebody sells land, they will, uh, he will, he will sell it to another person, he will sell it to another person. So, now we're going to court and all that is not uh, something to write on about. So, I'm advising that the government should come into it and do something about it. Inye ga eme konye tuko akakare awo ime implementation ime ya onye mire ya na enhu that onye me puri ya na enwe ye mire ya oge me oge me ya but mbo ya na enwe anything ime ga about it anybody can do anything ime sensitization after the sensitization came implementation of that law All right, we've gone to the field to feel the pulse of the masses. And of course, uh, people, uh, they spoke on what to do. Uh, that's mainly what they are saying, what should be done uh, to curb land grabbing disputes in Anambra communities. And a lot of them actually spoke well. One of them was talking about enlightenment, so something like that, mm. that uh, there should be time to go to communities to enlighten them on issues or what they should do what they should not do concerning land. Now, you were, we were talking about um, sea of war before we went for break. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I know so many people, or some people in the past have had their properties uh, destroyed and the lands taken over by government. So in situations like that, what can sea of war do for you? Okay. Yes, if you have the sea of C of O from the government, genuinely, in a government land. It should be signed by the governor. 
if it is a government land. And if the signature of the governor is in the CFO you have, and maybe later the government came in and destroyed that property, it's either the CFO, the CFO is not genuine, but if it is genuine and the government wants to take care of that place, they, they have to compensate whatsoever. They have the building or whatsoever in the land because the CFO was given to the person from the ministry or you cause investigation from in the ministry. So is it only the governor that has the right to sign the CFO? If it is state land. If it is state land. But if not state land, who The signs? attorney general, but the, commis the commissioner for land can do that now because he's a son and a senior lawyer. Okay. He can do that now before the attorney general signs it. All right. Let's now uh, look into the issue of um, youths in our communities and uh, the way they go about when people buy land, especially when people are ready to develop the land. Mm -hmm. Most times they come in their numbers demanding for some amount before you can do anything on that land and sometimes if you if you fail to give them what they are demanding uh, they will not allow you to to uh, you know develop your property mm. so in that situation what do we do um we this office my office we normally go after the youth that does like that one it is unlawful it is very very unlawful because why, why is it unlawful the law the law said here illegal collection of fees he said any person who demands or collect any fee not approved by the law from any person who is developing or improving an already existing property in the state shall be guilty of an offense and liable to imprisonment for five years or the fine of 500,000 or both. No youth have the right to go into the site because if they go into the site, the, the, the law here in section, section 8 of this law, assault on site workers. You know, they go in there with force. The next thing they will beat the people working, ba 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 collect, seize their, this thing. But they they don't know that they are committing offense. They feel they are just doing day to day. They get the money, come into a beer parlor in the morning, start drinking. Go to the beer parlors everywhere in this state, in this town. You see people drinking. Why, they, why are they drinking at this time? Because they go in there, they make easy money. Go into the site, tell somebody, put a peg that they pay, somebody will pay 500,000, 400,000. It's unlawful. If you get them, they will be apprehended. But we've sensitized a lot of people on this matter, communities on this matter. We go in before, sensitize them. We have time for perspective before. So after our perspectives, we go in to the community, the, I mean this committee, to sensitize them and give them orientations. You understand? On the aspect of this youth, youth have no right. Anybody that sees any youth in your sight, in any community in, in Anambra State. In any community. Yes, they have development levy, which can be ratified by whosoever, either the traditional ruler or the kingmakers. In that community, if you, if you, if maybe they have, they've said that anybody that wants to build the land there, for peace sake, will pay development and youth levy. If before you pay for ritual, that's, uh, we call it a wana, all those things will be done. The community that sold that for you, with respect, you ask them what is the fee, the requirement, so that not when you start working, some touts will just jump in because they are touts. Jump into one's land, start beating the, the workers. Why the law is against it? So anybody that does that will be apprehended. So we we'll go into the community, tell them, please, don't allow your youth to go into the site where people are building. Mm -hmm. I want to give one example. If you go to some of all these government lands that have been acquired or given to estate developers, you will see some people will gang themselves up as community leaders, go into that place to extort money from you, telling you that the government did not compensate them, that the government did not do this, that the government took the land and gave to you. Why should that? 
really it is bad one side if a land if my land is collected from me for overriding public interest and i now instead of to say that this is government of anambra building on that my land i now see mr ifai building block or building block industry on my land it's fraudulent because that is my land government collected it for me for them to use not for you not for you to be giving it you are an individual like me they can't collect my own land my own father's you. land and give to you as an individual in that case what do you do in that case you sue the person to court let's be frank here you sue the person to court because and if you look at it both the investigation you will do in the ministry you will find out that it is fraudulent okay this a one you know that you talked about mm. earlier how many times does one has to uh, kill a one it's in just the land? once it's just once that's the ritual you do it just once just once anybody that comes in out one to, land in one land anybody that comes out to ask for it again you take action against that person it's a criminal uh, all right now uh, another very important issue is um in a community where a land is owned by families mm. not just one family maybe your your family your father mm. you know has a brothers and they, they have just one land so instead of nobody can use it they had to sell it in a situation like that you know what is expected of the buyer and of course the families that are selling the land okay um on that note if they have that land it will be a unanimous concept the family will say will say um i we want to sell this land my father let me use myself as an example we have lands and maybe as an indeed woman i my brothers my father brothers they have land together somewhere and Maybe we want to sell it because we can't share it to sell differently. What the buyer will do in the course of inquire, uh, investigation to inquire the authenticity of the land, and he finds out that the land belongs to these two people. The only thing he should do, if the, there are two families, and it depends on the way of their ratio of sharing, sharing method in the family. Because you will not go into the family to tell them about their sharing method. Mm -hmm. But if the sharing method is 50-50, because it is being owed by me and you, or my father and your father, what you will do as a buyer is when you are you finished the discussion, you have settled and you want to pay. You want to pay. It's either you pay separately. 50, if it is 20 million, you pay 10 million to this okay. family. 10 million to do they will all come and sign the documents to you In individually Indiv separately. separately okay but no you make one deed all of them will come and put okay. their hand okay. because they sold together. together but the payment is be, was anybody divided. should bring his or her own account yes okay. because you might send after the sales you say pay into this one's account the person will go confiscate the money mm. and use it against you because the money is with him it's up if you want police you go if you want anywhere they continue because he has the cash to fight you but if somebody that wants to use wants to enjoy the property is by and this is a community property or brotherly brotherhood or brotherly property what you have to do is after discussion make sure that each of the family some people do it some people come to my office come to the local government mm -hmm. and say we want to buy this land please make sure help us and make sure that there is no dispute there We'll go into the investigation. And if we find out that they are not complete, people selling the land are not complete, we we'll tell you outrightly, don't oh, buy. The, the family, the whole, the whole family involved must, must be aware. And must agree. They must agree. If one person, because some of those people, mm -hmm. let me say, somebody bought a land at um, Aguaca. At Aguaca. But one person from the family is in Kanu State. And it's an elderly one in Kano, definitely his consent must be sought before you do that mm -hmm. then the junior brothers here resorted to going at his back to stand in for him to sell okay. and they sold collected the money he came back and said he's not True. aware they now brought the document as a senior 
representing the family, his signature is supposed to be the number one signature. The next signature they saw was his brother, the least, the junior brother's signature. Hmm. And the person said, I didn't sign this document. They called that man and said, why did you sign this document? He said, it is a family land. This my senior brother is at Kano. We can't reach him. Did you communicate him? No. They wanted to subtract him because they felt he's up and doing where he is. Mm. That one refuses and brought the matter to our office. We told them that you can't keep this man aside. But what we did was to see, instead of you losing your money or start going to court, spending more, we called the person that reported the matter and said, if you are carried along, how will you feel? You must, you must seek consent mm. of that person first. So the person said, okay, call them. Let me know how much they sold the, the, proper, land. the land. And if they sold the land, where did they pay the money? Who did they pay? And how did they give my own brothers money? How much was given to, to, my, to my brothers? And this land was sold for 14 million. The other brothers, the big ones there, removed from 10 million and paid 4 million to the other younger ones that signed there. They were all jumping up because they saw 4 million. When they are supposed to have seven million, their three million is still pending. Mm. That one man said, okay, since my brothers were given four million, give me my three million naira, give them their three million naira back. This land is not sold for 14 million. I will sell this land 20 million. If you want to buy, you buy. If you don't want to buy, go and collect your money from the people you sold. And you can't enter this land. But what we don't support is trial by ordeal. We don't allow people going while the case is in the office of the government. You say you are going to Shirai. It is trial by ordeal. It's an <laughs> offense too. Because there are actions you will take against, you, against the will of someone and it becomes an offense. All right. Another, another important issue we'll look at is uh, the issue of revalidation of land. You know, when I buy a land mm. and uh, it was revo it's revoked, mm. you know, can there be revalidation? Yes, the government have, there is announcement, there is publicity, publication going on all over the social media. Mm. Val revalidation, revalidation mm. and verification. If you have a land where they said government have revoked, you see, if you have a C of O there, the C of O is invalid anymore. It's no more valid. Do you understand? Really? Yes. If a land is being revoked and you have a C of O, the C of O is no more valid. Like Agwaka industrial layout. We don't have anything industrial layout in the government, in the eyes of the government now on Agwaka land. Mm. It is no more industrial. It is millennium okay. estate now. And if somebody is parading himself with industrial layout certificate, certificate why it has been revoked, it is, uh, you, will be, you will be arrested. Really? You have a fake document with you, not minding it was issued to you. So for you to do it and make sure you come back, to, you put it to normalcy, you go to the Ministry of Land for annulment. You put up a letter of annulment. If it is being done, they will now allow you, you pay in because it, the contract, the old contract has been has expired. They will tell you, go and pay in social team, and you pay in the receipt that will be issued to you will be on the name of the new so that if you are going for the C of O, it will, it will be a new name, no more industrial layout. So if you see those people that have land and you want to do very, very revalidation, maybe you have a C of O and it has been revoked, go to ministry. They have every answers to most of this problem. But the only problem is that if you don't do the needful, there are fees to be paid. To be paid. And some people go to the ministry, instead of you doing the right thing, you call people outside the gate to tell them you want to do such a thing. They will extra, will collect money from you in the gas that they want to go and do it for you. They will start doing every other thing. Mm. Sidetracking an office that is supposed to be involved in the verification or revalidation. Because first thing you do in Ministry of Land, you, want, you go in for search. You go in, is this land revoked? Is it still valid? My documents, how far? That they means being in tune of yes, what is what, going, what is on, going in on in the society from time to time, time. to time. So you now what you have to do is to go, into, to, go to the government. How do we do this? It has been revoked. I was given the allocation as when the land was virgin. And I built, and you see, let me say something. The, in the sea of O, you have time for you to build. They will say, you will erect 
in either a month a year and eight months time a structure must be there that's why sometimes you will see some people that acquire government land they will go in start building security houses oh. security houses for them to know that someone is there then the main thing they are not they have not done that because they know they don't have the money to be but they want to sell it in future so it is their own business mm. all right uh we know that in this part of the world, one thing is making laws. Mm. Uh, another thing is its implementation. Yeah. You know, I know uh, most people may be watching us even online, or even people that are not living in Anambra but have land or have interest in owing land in Anambra State. Uh, now, uh, concerning the law at hand, mm. I would want you to let us know how accessible uh, these laws, you know, how do we go about it to make sure that we are, you know, that our, our, our rights are not truncated and of course that when something goes wrong, the right place to go and get justice. All right. You see, these laws now being en enacted by the state, go by the House of Assembly, is being used. The police prosecute people with this, an umbrella state law. It is now the easiest law they use on land matters because it is state law direct fine or direct imprisonment the law took care of every all these things do you understand so for assess for assessing for accessibility for where you go the law said i want to read something here it said enforcement committee that is the creation it said the chairman of the local government or any person acting in his capacity shall set up a committee to, to, to be ratified by the State House of Assembly which carries out the following functions. Check the activities of persons who go about exploiting land developers and property owners. Monitor land and property in the local government area and identify persons who are breaching the provision of the law and report any person Violate, who violates the provision of this law to the police. You understand? So it is you, it is the local government before. In the time of um, Willie, by that time I was still uh, an operational head, not the chairman okay. of this committee. I will go to local government. Or cannot. Enforcement committee is still working. But many other ones are no more working. One, because of st stipends. Two, because of matters. Some of them feel they don't have a lot of matter. Some of them don't believe in going to government. All those people living in it. You do, tomorrow they will go and bring something. This palm, can, palm tree, omu. They will just unclose. Mm -hmm. Go there, carry shrine, put, that, put in there. So, but for accessibility, the, I would like the government who will serve to make sure this thing go back to the 21 local government. That is why it was narrowed to local government. Because state have, people don't come to state to tell them that my own personal land has been taken over by an individual like me. So they resort to going to police. But if it is in the 21 local government, you see, people will go to their local government report their matters the person in the local government is still somebody from the village he knows who and who to go and meet on this issue ask how do this thing come they will make in-depth investigation and come out with their report so that if the person is being taken to the police the police will act according to the report of the committee so it is the local government the the local they go in they stop going they should stop going to the police let the gov governor make it round up to the 21 local government and we are sure of justice at the By end of the day. The, they, they can't compromise. First, it's, you know, an English man to Luther said that, that honesty is an expensive gift you don't expect from cheap people. cheap people. In any situation, even though in this government house you put somebody that is cheap, he will compromise the governor because he was cheap. All things you try to do to make that person responsible, one day, as a cheap person, he will be bought over, then sabotaging you. So I, uh, the governor should make sure it goes back to the local, local government, government which the law was made of take the law to the local government 
the local government, gov gov uh, local government chairman, up to whether you have it or not, some cases still come to the local government, who they send to engineer of the local council to look onto, which there is a committee which is supposed to look into this matter. So if the governor does that, it will give easier, when we started it, no more, it, the, the matter, any matter arising from land grabbers or speculators, uh, uh, swindlers, have reduced in this, our state capital now. But before, nobody come, any land you are going to, they will say, ah, this, one, this land is in trouble. This land is in dispute. This family, but now, people go in, buy their land, but the main thing is for you to do the needful on the process of All buying right, the quickly, land. Quickly, in a second, what's the best way to curb land grabbing in our communities? The, it should, the Igwe, PGs, since you are talking of community, mm. youth chairmen and village chairmen are supposed to put heads together. together. I, I even want, I even wanted, I made that uh, uh, um, request for all agents in this state. Every agent in this state should go to their local government and register as an agent so that you checkmate them. And when this is being done, you put fear into some people. Because some of the agents are conspirators. Mm -hmm. They conspire with people that want to obtain from you illegally and defraud you. All right. Quickly, we thank you so much for being here this morning. Prince Ike Chuku Ndigwe, Mbuze Oka, Land Law Expert, Chairman Enforcement Committee on Law on Prohibition of Fraudulent Practices, and other related matters, Oka South. Thank you so much for your time. You are welcome. All right, my name is Nonye Nwokoye, and this is where we wrap up. Good morning, Anam Brasho, for today. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you've learned one or two things concerning land grabbing in Anambra State. Bye for now, and have a wonderful weekend.